It's really important that people get nosy about what it is that they're providing solutions for. Um, as being people people in HR or OD or L&D, we tend to leap to solution mode very, very quickly because we want to help people. And so there were two key things that we were looking at. One was about questions to dig really deeply into what the organisation needs. Not what it says it's wanting, but what it actually really, really needs. And there's a model that I use, which is H-I-R-E what's happening, what the issues, ramifications and your expectations. So once you start to dig deeper, you start to understand and then you can set some really, really good objectives. And I use Robert Major's PCS framework, performance conditions and standards. And that allows you to set objectives which can be easily measured. So once you've found out what it is that you need, you actually need a way that you can set an objective which you can then measure whether or not you've been effective or not. And it's all in my book, actually, with many more stuff as well. How not to waste your money on training, but it's also for HR projects as well. Today we were speaking a lot about human behavior, the importance of joyful experiences and how technology can help engender that uh, from an HR perspective for the employees of councils, but then also for the people whom they serve in the population. If we treat them with respect, they'll treat the population with respect. And as we shared that message today, we could see that there was an openness to understanding those concepts, that there was a willingness to be more progressive, that I think for us, we feel that local council, local government in general has an amazing opportunity in the UK to change expectations, both for employees, but also for the citizens whom we serve. If we can do that through technology, changing a bit of our culture, then I think that's a really successful outcome for local government in general and for all of us who live here. Well, I talked about my own experience of being fired, which I found absolutely devastating, and how I felt I lost not just my job, but my vocation, my voice, my sense of purpose, my identity, and the process that followed of picking myself up and trying to piece together a new life and find new meaning and identity in my life. And I also talked about how I set out to interview people to find out how they had coped when their lives had gone wrong. So people who'd lost their jobs, people who'd lost people they loved, people who'd suffered illness. And I'd pulled together those stories in my book, The Art of Not Falling Apart, which essentially is about how we pick ourselves up when life goes wrong. And talk about resilience and courage and humour and friendships and network and how we all learn to find joy in the everyday and find a way forward. I was really excited about speaking at the PPMA conference because it's an opportunity to speak to HR leaders uh, to help them understand what it is to recruit people with criminal convictions. I think we often have this perception of what a person with a criminal conviction is and it was my job today to kind of share what a person with a criminal conviction might be and how it's not your typical image of the thug behind bars, the gangster, this side of it, that people from all walks of life can have a criminal conviction. Being a sponsor and an exhibitor of the PPMA conference, uh, we found this very interesting this year as you know, the themes are very important to everybody here today and I enjoy meeting and networking with, with the individual organisations being represented to learn what their challenges are, how they're addressing those challenges and from a supplier point of view we do learn from that experience and that information shared with us so hopefully we can weave that into the services that we provide. We've been members now for three or four years and we keep coming back because we love it but we've gained so many wonderful associations through the membership of PPMA. We have probably 70% of all of our work now is done through the association so the work I do with local authorities has mainly come from this. We find we get a lot of benefit from the regional events, being involved as a platinum sponsor means that we're involved in strategy so it's not just about the conference it's about the whole relationship throughout the year. Um, and it's made a huge difference to our growth. A strategic partner with PPM, it's, it's a perfect fit actually. Um, we are a public service or public sector civil service organisation. Uh, essentially we are a, a membership organisation uh, and we're, we're, you have to be within the civil service public sector to become a member of ours, so the match is a perfect one. The offer that we have uh, for PPMA members we currently have around 200,000 members of our own. 
existing and with it being such a close perfect fit uh, with the audience and the membership of PPMA um, there's just a strategic opportunity to make to be able to make more people aware uh, of what we have to offer which is all about getting our members out there uh, to do more of the things that they love uh, we're keen to spread the word PPMA are keen to add value to their proposition so as I said it's a, it's really is a perfect fit We've been coming to the PPMA conference now for uh, a number of years as a platinum sponsor and the, the HR community in local government is our core market so it really gives us an opportunity to engage with our sort of key um, sort of stakeholders we want to engage with and um, the relationship we've got with the PPMA is invaluable. It's definitely um, a more interactive conference than, than some of the ones that professional bodies run and I think it's, it's really easy, people are really friendly and it's a good opportunity to make again good work contacts. It's my first conference and so far it's been brilliant, it's been really insightful, there's been a lot of good um, key speakers. Um, I particularly went to the Let's Talk Digital um, session and that was brilliant. I would recommend people to come to this conference if they get the opportunity. Uh, it's a good opportunity to network and obviously you can get a lot of information that you wouldn't normally be exposed to. You can also see how that could work within your organisation and how you can make that work to, I suppose, give better services to the public. That's what we're here for at the end of the day and certainly there are many providers here who are able to deliver those services for us. Keynote speakers have been absolutely brilliant, really high quality, uh, really thought provoking. We've got loads of ideas to go back and think about, so it's all been ace. We've really, really enjoyed it. Brilliant, very informative, um, great opportunities to network and meet other organisations that are doing very similar things to some of the stuff that we're doing at Leeds City Council. Um, I've got loads of new contacts to take away to contact after this. Um, I work in a traded service, so it's great to understand what everyone else is doing to help bring money into the public sector. A combination of things from the speakers, but also the opportunity to get together with um, other colleagues from right across the country that I've met here before and work with, and also the partners that are around the room here today that we work with. I actually really enjoyed it. Um, it's the first time that I've been to the conference. I'm from Rochdale Council and a group of us from Greater Manchester have joined the PPMA. And what I weren't really sure what to expect. They thought the programme looked interesting with its um, focus on sort of OD in particular um, and um, on the employee engagement and that type of thing, which is an area of real interest for, for me. Um, I found it interesting to network with other people. Um, I found that the tone has been very celebratory and very positive, um, which you know is, is quite sort of uplifting, um, and taking quite a, a number of, of things to take back to the organisation. Thank you so much uh, for Karen and the PPMA for inviting us here uh, to be the kind of beneficiary of the raffle last night. Uh, we're so grateful, we raised 1,700 quid, it's amazing, um, and there's so much that we can do uh, for our community. Thinking about the work we've done with PPMA and the Apprentice of the Year and the winner Daniel, awareness is a, is a, is a, is a lot of this. And the, the, reason, the reason I mentioned Daniel is awareness of autism tends to be really polar. If you have a connection to autism, then autism impacts your every single day. And you know an awful lot about autism and how best to support someone who's autistic through the various stages of their life. If you don't have a direct and personal connection to autism, we find you generally know nothing. So a lot of our work is around raising awareness um, in order to better able to help HR, recruiters, managers and colleagues support autistic individuals in the workplace. Daniel was diagnosed with um, global developmental delay when he was three years old. So we really didn't know what was in store for us. So we just took one day at a time with him. Um, he didn't talk till he was five and he basically went to um, a special school all his life. I was diagnosed with Asperger's, which is a form of autism. Um, but I felt that uh, it was, I had a sense of closure because I understood why I behaved the way I did and the way, the way I thought the way that I did. So I understood um, why I was the way that I was. We didn't really have 
expectations in the sort of normal way that you would have with your children. As time has gone on and Daniel continues to show his capabilities and surprise us, um, it's more and more really a question of letting him get on with it and giving him the space as much as possible, but just being there in the background, just in case. Never underestimate what uh, the, the child with autism can do or achieve. What you can, all you can do is accept them for the way that they are, love them unconditionally, take one day at a time and give them as much support and be as open to as much support as what's available. There's more support for autistic children and for autistic adults now than there ever has been. So never give up, keep going, and you never know what they can achieve. We've had an incredibly positive Conference 19, and it's reinforced by my cloak of negativity. We've had just an extraordinary three days dealing with topics that impact our organisations. Leadership, employee engagement, health and wellbeing and the neuroscience of leadership. We've taken our conference delegates through a range of perspectives. We've thought about our roles in how we support and encourage our organisations to develop productive workforces. We've also, through a really inspiring journey, thought about some really tough issues that we have to face on a day-to-day -day basis around bullying and harassment. As a professional community, we have an extraordinarily important role to play in eradicating bullying and harassment and taking a lead role in that with the rest of our organisations. So we're really delighted that whilst we've got a theme that's focused on happiness, we really need to tackle some tough issues and truth to power and supporting colleagues who are in difficult situations is something that's going to be high on our agenda for the rest of 2019-2020.